Hello, fifth graders. This is another attempt at an Edmodo lesson for U.S. history to 1865, and this time we're going to get caught up and talk about the geographic regions of North America. You have your study guide on the top of the study guide. You will see it says geographic regions, locations, and physical characteristics. These are all for North America, not for Virginia like last year, but for North America. We're going to begin by talking about each region, their location, that's where they're located, of course, and their description of each region, what the land is like there. And here we go. We're going to start off with the coastal plain. You remember the coastal plain from last year in fourth grade? Well, this year in fifth grade, there's also the coastal plain of not just Virginia, which in, is included in the coastal plain, but the coastal plain of the whole North American continent. Okay, the location of the coastal plain is located along the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico is a large body of water that is, um, it borders Mexico to the east and it borders the United States to the south. Um, so located along the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. If you were to describe it, you would describe it as having lowlands that are broad. Broad is another word for wide. Broad lowlands providing many excellent harbors. A harbor is a body of water that is um, kind of enclosed a little bit by land and the harbors are um, used for importing and exporting goods um, such as things from China, things from different countries and also sending things out of the country to other countries to sell and and as well as people. Okay, so that's coastal plain located along the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. It's described as being broad lowlands. The land is low there and providing many excellent harbors. The next geographic region of North America is the Appalachian Highlands. The Appalachian Highlands is located west of the coastal plain extending from eastern Canada to western Alabama and includes the Piedmont. Okay, so this is the Appalachian Highlands. This is a region that basically includes the Appalachian Mountains, which of course are run through Virginia, but um, it's located west of the coastal plain, extending from eastern Canada, the eastern part of Canada, which borders the United States to the north, our northern neighbor, to western Alabama, the state of Alabama, and includes the Piedmont. Um, to describe this area, you would say it has old, eroded mountains. It is the oldest mountain range in North America. We know they're old because they are eroded. Okay, when we get down and talk to um, talk about the Rocky Mountains, I'll mention how the Rocky Mountains are steep and pointy mountains where the Appalachian Highlands and Appalachian Mountains in the Appalachian Highlands are old and rounded and the, it's because of the erosion. Okay, um, If you need to pause this video, of course you can to catch up to fill in your blanks here with Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, lowlands, harbors, the Appalachian Highlands again located west of the coastal plain extending from eastern Canada to western Alabama includes the Piedmont and if you describe it you would say it has old eroded mountains it's the oldest mountain range in North America okay remember you can pause this if you need to I want to go ahead and scroll down so we can get our next region of North America and that next region is called the Canadian Shield the Canadian Shield. Now the location of the Canadian Shield is basically near the Hudson Bay. Hudson Bay is a bay that is close to New York and Canada. It's wrapped around the Hudson Bay actually in a horseshoe shape. Okay, So the Canadian Shield wrapped around the Hudson Bay in a horseshoe shape and if you describe the land there you would say it has hills worn by again erosion. 
Water has changed and shaped our land so much over the thousands of years that our world's been in existence. And um, the hills of the Canadian Shield are worn by erosion and hundreds of glaciers. Sorry, not hundreds of glaciers, hundreds of lakes carved by glaciers. All right, that's the Canadian Shield. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Remember, of course, you can pause and rewind this video if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up to get our next geographic region of North America, which is, our fourth one is the Interior Lowlands is what it's called. They're called the Interior Lowlands. Well, lowlands kind of describes it anyway. It's low land, low in elevation. Interior means inside. Okay, it's located west of the Appalachian Mountains and east of the Great Plains. Now, being west of the Appalachian Mountains and east of the Great Plains, it's kind of in the middle of those two areas, okay? It can be described as having land that is rolling flatlands with many rivers, broad river valleys, and grassy hills. That's the interior lowlands. Our next region is the Great Plains. Now, the Great Plains is also known as our breadbasket. We call it our breadbasket because in the United States, that's where a lot of wheat is grown. And when people grow wheat, they harvest it and, and they grind it up to make flour. And, of course, we use flour to make bread. So the Great Plains is located west of the interior lowlands and east of the Rocky Mountains. East of the Rocky Mountains. The land in this area is considered to be flatlands that gradually increase in elevation. They gradually increase in elevation. Meaning that the further you go west, the higher the land gets. Increases in elevation as you go westward. And it's, of course, grasslands. The Great Plains is a lot of grasslands, a lot of farmland there. All right. Our next region. Have to scroll this down quite a bit. Remember, you can pause this if you need to to catch up. The next region is the Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains. If you go to the Rocky Mountains, you're going to see some ski resorts. You're going to see tall, tall mountains, pointy mountains. Not like the mountains around here that are round and covered with trees. These these are just rocky. Tall, rocky, and pointy. They're pretty young compared to the mountains we have here. Have here. They're located west of the Great Plains and east of a region called the Basin and Range. Now the word basin, well, if you when you go to the sink to wash your hand in the restroom, the sink part, the bottom part that catches the water, that's called the basin. So imagine a bowl. The basin and the word range refers to the word range refers to mountain ranges, okay? So the Rocky Mountains again located west of the Great Plains and east of the basin and range. Now, if you were described, if you describe this region of North America, you would say it has rugged mountains stretching from Alaska almost down to Mexico. High elevations. The mountains in Virginia where you and I live, the mountains in Virginia, the highest mountain is 5,279 feet. The tallest mountains in this region of the United States and North America, you're talking between eight and 10,000 feet tall. Quite a bit of difference there. This region contains the continental divide which determines the directional flow of rivers. It's called the continental divide. And of course, you know rivers flow downhill. All right, again, you can pause this if you need to. 
I want to scroll on down to the next region that was the Rocky Mountains located west of the Great Plains and east of the Basin and Range. Rugged mountains stretching from Alaska to almost to Mexico with high elevations and contains the continental divide which determines the directional flow of the rivers, determines which direction the rivers flow. I want to go ahead and unveil the next one here which is called the Basin and Range. Now, the Basin and Range. Remember, pay attention to what I'm saying to you because I'm trying to explain what some of this stuff means. The Basin and Range is located west of the Rocky Mountains and east of the Sierra Nevadas and the Cascades. Okay, so if you go to the Rocky Mountains and you go west, you'll hit the Basin and Range region. East of the Sierra Nevadas, west of the Rocky Mountains, east of the Cascades. It has varying elevations, lots of different elevations, containing isolated, now the word isolated means that they're hard to get to, they're not next to a lot of people, they're hard to get to, ice containing isolated mountain ranges and it contains a place called Death Valley which is in California. Death Valley is the lowest point in North America. It um, actually gets very hot there in certain times of the year. You're talking 120 degrees sometimes, which is very hot. It's the lowest point in North America. That was the base center range, again, located west of the Rocky Mountains, east of the Sierra Nevadas, and the Cascades, varying elevations, lots of different elevations containing isolated mountain ranges. Mountain ranges that are hard to get to, that's what isolated means. Okay, they're kind of by themselves. And Death Valley, the lowest point in North America. Okay, I'm going to scroll down a little bit more to our next and final region, which is the Coastal Range. The Coastal Range is located along the Pacific Coast. Now, this is where you could talk to Miss Hall about this and... This is basically where she's from. She's from probably close to the coastal range. Not may, maybe not right in, not, maybe not right in the area, but close to the coastal range because she's from Washington State, the state of Washington, which is different than the state of than our our country's capital, Washington D.C. Okay, it's located along the Pacific Coast, stretching from the state of California. That's where Mrs. Mack is from. To Canada, all the way up to Canada, our northern neighbor. To describe this, you would say it has rugged mountains. The mountains here are again steep and hard to get around, and fertile valleys. Fertile valleys means that the valleys are good for growing crops. Okay, that concludes our eight regions of. North America's geography, ge the eight geographic regions. I'm going to scroll back up and go through them once again. It's the coastal plain, located along the Atlantic Ocean and Gulf of Mexico. The Appalachian Highlands, located west of the coastal plain, extending from eastern Canada to western Alabama, includes the Piedmont. Canadian Shield, wrapped around the Hudson Bay in a horseshoe shape. Interior lowlands, located west of the Appalachian Mountains and east of the Great Plains. The Great Plains, located west of the interior lowlands and east of the Rocky Mountains. Rocky Mountains, located west of the Great Plains and east of the Basin and Range. Then the Basin and Range, located west of the Rocky Mountains and east of the Sierra Nevadas and the Cascades. And then finally, the Coastal Range, located along the Pacific Coast, stretching from California to Canada. Those are our eight geographic regions of North America. Please make sure you have this study guide, as well as also known as your notes page, filled out for your geographic regions of North America. Thank you.